The subject of this video is controversial. There will be people who say I'm deluded, I'm an idiot, whatnot, for saying the things I'm going to say in this video. I really don't care. God has revealed the truth to me. The book of Enoch tells us that these angels, which were cast for heaven, mixed the kinds. Now that's something that man doesn't have enough technology to do. We can't take the genetics of two different kinds, like ape and human, and mix them together, or a reptile and a human, or an insect and a human, and mix them together and create a viable living creature. According to modern biology, that's impossible. That's impossible to us, though, not to the angels. The angels have far greater knowledge than man. No, we can genetically modify complex life forms. Then in the 1970s, Monsanto introduced Roundup. Because of its ability to kill most weeds, it became one of the most popular herbicides in history. In the mid-1990s, building on technologies that used gene splicing, the Green Revolution turned into the Gene Revolution. Capitalizing on the new technology, Monsanto genetically modified its seeds to be Roundup ready. Normally, Roundup kills anything green, but if the plant is Roundup ready, when it is sprayed, it doesn't die. With Monsanto's BT corn, the corn itself is registered as an insecticide. This is because every cell has been engineered to manufacture BT a natural bacterial toxin. If a corn borer eats any part of the plant, it will die. And we aren't limited to plants with genetic modifications. It looks like any other salmon, but opponents call it frankenfish and hope to keep it off your dinner plate. Here's the difference. Both these fish are 18 months old, but the larger genetically engineered Aqua Advantage salmon grows twice as fast as the regular salmon. Atlantic salmon grows in fits and starts, but scientists found that adding genetic material from a Pacific salmon and an eel-like fish helps them grow round the clock. So you can see we are producing food for genetically modified crops. I'll list the main agricultural crops that are being used in the United States, with a percentage of those crops that are genetic modified strains, mostly modified for genes from bacteria. <clears throat> Soybeans, 93%. Corn, 86%. Canola, 93%. Cotton for cottonseed oil, 93%. This destroys your argument that we cannot produce viable genetically modified crops or animals. Although currently animals haven't really been modified and used for food production as there are public opinion and legislative hurdles they need to take. The salmon I've showed is the big test case. Also the crops I mentioned represent a large portion of your breakfast, lunch and dinner that is based on or derived from plants genetically modified with genes from bacteria. There was even a tomato with a fish gene. So how do you explain this in the context of your argument that we cannot modify genes and produce a viable life form? Have fun with that. 